Bonsoir. Welcome to the newcomers and welcome back for the other. Let's go into chapter 10. We had ourselves a prisoner. One of Marco's riders proved less dead than expected. Bad news for him, all in all. Making at Burlow and Rick brings a man to me on the burgers master steps. Say so his name's Renton, sir. Renton, if you please. Making said. I looked the fellow up and down. A nice black bruise wrapped itself halfway round his forehead. And an over embrace with mother hairs had left his nose somewhat flatter than he might have liked. His moustache and bird could have been neatly trimmed, but Kate in all that board, they looked a mess. Fell off your horse, did you, Renton? I asked. He stopped Count Renner's son under a flag of truce, he said. He sounded a little comical on the stab and son. A broken nose will do that for you. I did, I said. I can't think of anything I wouldn't have stabbed him under. I held in Renton's gaze. He had squinty little eyes. He wouldn't have been much to look at in court finery. On the steps, covered in mud and blood, he looked like a rat's leavings. If I were you, I'd be more worried about my own fate than whether Marcos was stabbed in accordance with the right social niceness. That, of course, was a lie. If I were in his place, I'd have been looking for an opportunity to stick a knife in me. But I knew enough to know that most men didn't share my priorities. As Mackin said, something in me had got broken. But not so broken I didn't remember what it was. My family is rich, they'll ransom me. Renton said. He spoke quickly, nervous now, as if he just realized his situation. I yawned. No, they're not. If they were rich, you wouldn't be reading in chain armors as one of Marco's guard. I yawned again, stretching my mass until my jaw cracked. Michael, get me a cup of that festival beer, will you? Michael's dead, Rick said, from behind Sir Renton. Never, I said. Idiot Michael? I thought God had blessed him with the same legs that looked after drinkers and madmen. Well, he's near enough dead, Rick said. Got him a good full of rusty iron from one of Renner's boys. We laid him out in the shade. Touching, I said. Now get my beer. Rick grumbled and slapped Job into taking the errand. I turned back to Sir Renton. He didn't look happy, but he didn't look as sad as you might expect a man in such a bad place to look. His eyes kept sliding over to Father Gunst. Here is a man in his face, in a higher source, I thought. So, Sir Renton, I said, what brings young Marcos to Encrust Protectorates? What does the Count think he's up to? Some of the brothers had gathered around the stape for the show. But most were still looting the dead. A man's coin is nice and portable, but the brothers wouldn't stop there. I expected the head court to be hipped with arms and armors when we left. Boots, too. There's three coppers in a well-made pair of boots. Renton coughed and whipped his, at his nose. 
spreading black gore across his face. I don't know the complaints. I am not privy to his private counsel. He looked up at the farther ghost. Ghost. As God is my witness. I leaned in close to him. He smelled sour, like cheese in the sun. God is your witness, Renton. is going to watch you die. I let that sink in. I gave old Gomsty a smile. You can look after this night soul, father. The sins of the flesh, though, they're all mine. Rick handed me my cup of beer, and I had a sip. The day you're tired of fluting, little Ricky, is the day you're tired of life, I said. It got a chuckle from the brothers on the steps. Why, well, you're still here when you could be cutting up the dead in search of a golden lever. Come to see you put that hurt and red face, Rick said. You're going to be disappointed, then, I said. Sir Redface is going to tell me everything I want to know, and I'm not even going to have to raise my voice. When I'm done, I'm going to hand him over to the new Burgermeister of Norwood. The peasants will probably burn him alive, and he'll count it is an easy way out. I kept it conversational. I find it the coldest threads that reach the deepest. Out in the marsh, I'd made a man, a, ma a dead man, run in terror, with nothing more than what I keep inside. It occurred to me that what scared the dead might worry the living a piece too. Sir Renton didn't stand too scared yet, though. You stab the better man today, boy, and there's a better man before you. You're nothing but some shit in my shoe. I'd heard his pride. It was night after all, and he was a beardless lad making mock. Besides, the best I'd offered was an easy burning. Nobody considered that the soft option. When I was nine, the country nerd tried to have me killed, I said. I kept my voice calm. It wasn't hard. I was calm. And your carries less horror, is it? Men understand anger. It promises resolution. Maybe bloody resolution, but swift. The count failed, but I watched my mother and my little brother killed. All men die, Renton said. He spat dark and bloody mess into the steps. What makes you so special? He had a good point. What made my loose, my pain, any more important than everyone else? That's... A good question, I said. A damn good question. It was. There weren't but a handful of prisoners we'd taken from Marklo's train who hadn't seen a son, or a husband, a mother, or a lover killed. And killed in the past week. And this was my soft option. The mercies of the peasants compared to the attention of a young man whose heart stood four years old. Consider me a spokesman, I said. When it comes to stage acting, some men are more eloquent than others. It's given to particular men to have a gift with a bow. I nodded to the Nuban. Some men can knock the eye out of bull at a thousand paces. They don't aim any better for wanting it. They don't shoot straighter because they're justified. They just shoot straighter. Now, me, I just... 
avenge myself better than most. Consider it a gift. Renton laughed at that and spat again. This time I saw part of it too in the mess. You think you're worse than the fire, boy? He asked. I've seen men burn a lot of men. He had a good point. You've a lot of good point, Sir Renton, I said. I looked around at the ruins, tumbled walls in the most, and blackened timber skeletons where Ruth had kept a lead on folks live for year after year. It's going to take a lot of rebuilding, I said. A lot of hammers and a lot of nails. I sit my beer. A strange thing. Nails will hold the building together. But there's nothing better for taking a man apart. I hail Sir Renton's rat-like eyes. Dark and beady. I don't enjoy torturing people, Sir Renton. But I'm good at it. Not worldwide class, you understand. Cowards make the best torturers. Cowards understand fear, and they can use it. Heroes, on the other hand, they make terrible torturers. They don't see what motivates a normal man. They misunderstand everything. They can't think of anything worse than besmirching your honor. A coward on the other hand, he'll tie you to a chair and light a slow fire under you. I'm not a hero or a coward, but I work with what I've got. Renton had the sense to pale at that. He reached out a muddy hand to get Father Gomst. Father! I've nothing but serve my father. Father Gums will pray for your soul, I said, and forgive me the sins I incur in, detaching it from your body. Making personal sick leap of this. A prince, you've spoken about how you'd break the cycle of revenge. You could start here. You could let Sir Renton go. Rick gave him a look as if he'd gone mad. Mad. Fat girl look over the chuckle. I have spoken about that, Mekin, I said. I will break the cycle. I drew my sword and laid it across my knees. You know how to break the cycle of hatred? I asked. Love, said Gomst. All quiet like. The way to break the cycle is to kill every single one of the bastards that fucked you over, I said. Every last one of them. Kill them all. Kill their mothers. Kill their brothers. Kill their children. Kill their dog. I ran my thumb along the blade of my sword and what should the blue beat green sun on the wand? People think I hate the Count. But in truth, I'm a great advocate of his methods. He has only two failings. Firstly, he goes far, but not far enough. Secondly, he isn't me. He taught me valuable lesson, though. And when we meet, I will thank him for it with a quick death. Old Gumsty started at that. Contrain or did you run, Prince York? Forgive him, but don't take him. He'll burn in hell for what he did. His immortal soul will suffer for eternity. I had to laugh out loud at that. Church man here. Love one minute, forgiveness next, 
And then it's eternity on fire. Well, rest at ease, Sir Renton. I've no design on your immortal soul. Whatever happens between us, it will all be over in a day or two. Three, at most. I'm not the most patient of men. So it will end when you tell me what I want to know, or I get bored. I got up from my step and went to crutch by Sir Renton. I patted his head. They tied his hand behind him, and I had my chain mail gauntlets on. So if he had a mind to bite, it'd do him no good. I swore to Count Reinhardt, he said. He tried to pull away, and he craned his neck to look at old Gomsty. Tell him, father, I swore before God, if I break my foe, I'll burn in hell. Gums came to lay his hand on Renton's shoulder. Prince Yorg, this knight has made a holy vow. There are few us more sacred than that of a knight to his liege lord. You should not ask him to break it. Nor should any threat against the flesh compel a man to betray a covenant and forever place his soul in the fires of the devil. Here's a test of faith for you, Sir Renton, I said. I'll tell you my tale, and we'll see whether you want to tell me the Count's plan when I'm done. I settled down on the step beside him and swigged my beer. When I first took to the road, I was um, ten years of age. I'd a lot of anger in me then, and a need to know how the world worked. You see, I'd watched the Count's men kill my brother, William, and slit his mother open. So I knew that the way I thought things were supposed to work was wrong. And, of course, I fell in with bad sorts. Didn't I, Ricky? Rick gave that laugh of his. <laughs> I think he just made a sound when he thought we expected a laugh. It didn't have any joy in it. I tried my hand at torture then. I wonder if I was supposed to be evil. I thought maybe I'd had a message from God to take up the devil's work. I heard Gums muttering at that one. Prayers or condemnation. It was true too. For the longest time, I looked for a message in it all to work out what I was supposed to be doing. I laid my hand on Renton's shoulder. He sat there with my hand on his left shoulder and Gums hand on his right. We could have been the devil and the angel from this old scroll whispering in his ears. We could bush that mural down by Jed Meyer Hill, I said. I'm sure you heard about the loss of his mission. Anyhow, the brother let me have the bishop. I was something of mascot to them back then. The Nuban stood and walked off down the hill. I let him go. The Nuban didn't have the stomach for this kind of thing. That made me feel, I don't know, dirty? I liked the Nuban, though. I didn't let it show. Now... Oh. Bishop Marillo was full of harsh words and judgment. He had plenty to tell me about hellfire and damnation. We sat a while and discussed the business of Saul. Then I hammered a nail into his skull. Just here. I reached out and touched the spot on Renton's greasy head. He flinched back like it's been stung. The bishop changed his turn a bit after that, I said. In fact, 
Every time I knock a new nail into him, he changes tune. After a while, he was a very different man. Did you know you can break a man into his parts like that? One nail will bring back memories of childhood. Another will make him rage or sob or laugh. In the end, it seems we're just toys, easy to break and hard to mend. I hear that the nuns at St. Heartless still have Bishop Muriel in their cure. He's a very different person now. He clutches at their habits and slurs awful things to them. So they say, Where's the soul of that proud man and pious we took from the papal caravan is? Well, I can't tell you. With that, I magicked a nail into my fingers. A rusty spike, three inches long. The man wet himself, there on the steps. Berlo gave an oath and kicked him. Hard. When Rington got his breast back, he told me everything he knew. It took almost an hour. Then we gave him to the peasants, and they burned them. I watched the good folk of Norwood dance around their fire. I watched the flame leak above their heads. There's a pattern in fire, as if something's right in here. And there's folk who say that can read it too. Not me, though. It would have been nice to find some answers in the flames. I had questions. It was a thirst for the Count's blood that had set me on the road. But somehow, I'd given it up. Somehow, I sat aside and told myself it was a sacrifice to strength. I sipped my beer. Four years on the road, always going somewhere, always doing something. But now, with my feet pointed toward home, it felt like I'd been lost all the time. Lost or led. I tried to remember when I'd given up on the count and why. Nothing came to me, just a glimpse of my hand on the door and the sensation of falling foot into space. I'm going home, I said. The dull ache between my eyes become a rusty nail, driven deep. I finished my beer, but it did nothing for me. I had an older kind of thirst. Here we are, end of chapter 10. Uh, um, please tell me if there's words I really don't pronounce well, or if you know how to pronounce of some of the names here. Like its names, I guess we can pronounce it more than one way, and I don't know which one is right. Anyway, see you.